This is the first in a series of three videos that I'm going to make uh, that will show you how you can get those Zencore sounds using any aerophone. Okay, let me explain. You've probably seen recently a lot about the Aerophone Pro and the fact that it's got that great Zencore sound engine built in. Now, your budget might not stretch to the Aerophone Pro, so maybe you're thinking about getting the AE10 or the Aerophone Go. Now, those instruments have got great sounds on board, but they don't have those Zencore sounds built into them. So what I want to do in these videos is show you how you can, using your Mac or PC, use one of these instruments as a great MIDI controller to get those same Zencore sounds. So what we're going to be doing here, we're going to be looking at something called the Roland Cloud. Now, as part of the Roland Cloud, you can get something called Xenology Pro. And we're going to show you how you can use Xenology Pro and one of these instruments as the controller so you too can access those great Zencore sounds. This first video, we're going to be using the Mac and a program called Main Stage. Now, Main Stage is something I use pretty much every day uh, when I'm using my um, Aerophone. Uh, it's a great uh, tool and it's not expensive. I believe it's about $30 US. Um, you can download it from your uh, Mac App Store and we're going to walk through the setup in a moment on main stage. Um, and then in the next video, we're going to look at doing something very similar using a program called Camelot, which will do pretty much the same thing if you're a PC user. And then in the third video, I'm going to show you how we actually program Xenology Pro sounds so that they will work with your aerophone and I'm going to post a free file uh, that you'll be able to download some of the sounds that I've already programmed for Xenology Pro so you'll have a good head start. Okay, so you've got main stage installed and you've got that Xenology Pro installed uh, via the Roland Cloud. The next thing you're going to need to do is connect your AE10 to the computer using a USB cable. So let me talk you through the setup in main stage. This is by no means going to be an in-depth uh, uh, look at main stage. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible so you can set up this program. So go to uh, main stage, open main stage, go to file, new. Now what will open up here is a selection of templates and we're going to use one of these templates as a, as a nice easy place for us to start. Now just before you do that, have a little look down at the bottom here. Now. If you're using something like main stage, you really should have connected a, uh, an audio interface. Um, search YouTube videos on audio interfaces. There are lots of them, uh, but ideally you should use an audio interface. It's a much better way of getting a great sound out of your uh, laptop. And down at the bottom here, uh, you can click and choose your audio interface. It might come up and say you're just on the system setting. That means it's just going to use the internal speakers on your Mac. That's probably not so good. So select your own audio interface and uh, then you can click here uh, the, uh, the version that says keyboard. OK, double click. And here we are. We're in main stage. OK, so uh, a very brief tour because some of this will look a little bit daunting. There's lots to get into here. Uh, what's most important for us as beginners is these three main tabs in the top left hand corner. Layout. 
Layout is where we actually design our own screen layout here. Everything on this screen we can make changes to and we can lay it out exactly how we want to. We can add buttons and knobs and sliders and dials and whatever we like. Over on the edit page, this is where we can make those buttons and sliders control different elements of our sounds. To the right, we have these channel strip settings. Now these look like uh, a lot of DAWs where you've got sliders for volume and pan control, all that kind of thing. So each one of these channel strips is doing something different. And then in perform mode, this is just the kind of pretty screen, if you like, that you can use when you're performing. It shows you exactly what name sound you're on. You can see the activity working here on the keyboard below. So it's a nice visual representation of your entire setup. OK, let's make a start. Click on Layout, top left hand corner. Now, we're pretty much going to leave this layout as it is for now. As I've just said, you can click on anything here. You can delete stuff. You can resize it. You can drag things from the bottom here into your layout. So let's say we wanted to add maybe a button to control something, to turn something on and off. I grab hold of it, slide it up into the workspace. I can resize it any which way I'd like. And there I've put my own little button in. OK, so all of this screen layout we can change, but this actually works as a pretty good screen layout for us to begin with. Now, we've got a few things to set up so that the elements on this screen work with our aerophone. OK, so I've got my aerophone connected by the USB cable directly into my computer. And the first we want to do is we want to make this keyboard. This is the keyboard basically that's going to control all of our sounds and it gives us a nice visual representation of the notes. We want to make sure that this keyboard is connected with our aerophone. So when we play a note on the aerophone, that keyboard's going to actually move in time with the notes that we're playing. Now to do this, click on the keyboard. A little blue box comes around it. And in the top left hand corner here, under Screen Control Inspector, it says Hardware Input. Our aerophone is the hardware input. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to click on a sign. It's going to go red. And you're going to blow just a few notes on the aerophone. You won't get a sound. Now, but did you see? The notes started to move on the keyboard here. Click the assign button to take it off the red setting or the learn setting as we call it. OK, now we can actually check that our aerophone is connected because if I play notes, the MIDI keyboard is moving on the screen. If I move my thumb lever, you'll notice that we've got things moving on the screen when I move my thumb lever here up and down or to the left hand side. So already things are beginning to uh, take shape. OK, now a couple of other things that I do. On the uh, settings here, I've still got that keyboard uh, highlighted. On the settings, I change this. I double click on the number of notes. We actually need this on about 95 for an aerophone. It's got a bigger range than a standard 88 keyboard. And I make the lowest note uh, A sharp uh, zero. That's usually the, the best one to choose. And I also, where it says here, display keyboard layers, I usually take that off. Um, you don't really need that. Uh, we're not going to be getting into layers just yet. Let's move on and go on to the edit page. 
OK, now we can already check that we've got things working here, because now if I blow on the aerophone, you'll hear the sound of the electric piano. You'll see these keyboards working here. Now, that electric piano sound won't work very well because these sounds are intended for keyboard players. We want to use it with aerophone. And this is where we want to change this to uh, our Xenology. OK, we're going to do that in a moment. Let me just explain a few things that are important about this screen. We've got three sections, the patch list, what they call the workspace here in the middle, channel strips. Patch list. This is going to be where we have the list of all of our different sounds. We're going to add sounds here and we can um, click on the sounds to select a different sound. Now, something that's important to just understand about the patch list is there are three different levels of patch list like different levels of folders, if you like. The top level is what they call the concert level. Anything you change here when you've clicked on the concert level is going to apply to any other set or sound in your patch list. Now, I mentioned the word set. We can add a new set. So say you want to have a, like a first half of a gig and a second half of a gig, you might want to put those in two different sets. Or you might want a set of sounds for one song and a different set of sounds for another song. So you can start to organise your sounds however you like to. If you click just here, there's a little cogwheel, little down arrow next to it. Click on the down arrow, new set. OK, and here's a set. It's like a folder. Now, a set can have sounds inside that set. So again, it works just like a folder system can do. Now, any changes we make on the set level are going to apply to any sounds inside the set. So if I do new patch, now this sound is inside my set. And if I added another sound into that set, new patch, I've got two sounds now tucked away into that folder. If I make any changes here while this set is pressed, highlighted, any changes here on the screen that I make are going to affect both of these sounds here. And then if I just click on a separate sound, any changes I make here apply only to that sound. So be careful when you're changing things here in the workspace, make sure you've selected either the concert level, the set level, or the sound or patch level. Here's our workspace and over in the right hand side, our channel strips. Now I said earlier, this is like a, a DAW. Uh, we've got our volume slider here for the sound, pan, We've got a little picture representation of the sound we're using. This tells us where the output is going, where the sound is going out to your interface. Sends, those are going to control the amount of reverb or delay you've got there. We can make changes to those however we'd like. But what we're interested in here is a little bit further up input. Now it says e-piano. There's an e-piano selected at the moment. We don't want e-piano. We want Xenology to begin with. Now be careful, as you hover your mouse over this blue box here, you've got three portions of that box. You want the far right hand side with the, with the two arrows. Click it. Now a menu drops down. Now you can see in my menu at the top here, I've got Xenology. That's only because I've used it recently. If you haven't used it recently, you'll need to go down to AU Instruments. Another menu pops up. You want Roland Cloud. And then from your Roland Cloud Instruments, Xenology. 
this is going to load Xenology into this channel strip. And here it is. Now, this is a sound that I've already programmed to work with Xenology. And now if I play, I've got that sound in Xenology working with my AE-10. So the reason we need Xenology Pro is because uh, we need to get to this edit page here. This is where all the good stuff happens. And this is what I'm going to be showing you in that third video. So please make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell. So you'll know as soon as that third video comes out in this series, where I'll show you how to program those Xenology sounds to work with either the AE-10 or the Aerophone Go. Okay, just a little bit of housekeeping before we finish. Uh, this still says classic electric piano, and it isn't a classic electric piano anymore. It's the Xenology Pro sound. So what we need to do is change that name. If we go into our patch list, just double click on electric piano. You can rename it whatever you like. I'm renaming it Xenology. What we need to do now is go to File and Save. And now what you need to do is save your sound here. Name it whatever you like, whatever you want to do. I'm going to call it Xenology. And there, we have now got our concert, as they call it, in main stage with our Xenology sounds. That's all we need to do for this video. Remember, there's the second video coming up where I'll look at Camelot as a program. Um, I'm not actually gonna be using a PC, but Camelot will work on a PC. And then in the third video, I'll show you how you program Xenology to work with the Aerophone Pro. Please remember, subscribe to my channel, click that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.